thank you, Tommy, Johnny, and the band. All right, super. My people. All right, before we get started, I'd like to know, is there any other Mike Devaney's in the house? I want to know, make sure. Yes, no, nobody? Okay, good. They didn't mean for me to get up here on stage. You know, back in high school, though, we would eliminate that type of confusion because, uh, you know, there were different nicknames for everybody. There was Stoner Mike, there was Smelly Mike. Well, I was Funny Mike. And despite my two disabilities, the fact that I have a sense of humor and I actually have a personality, I became a CPA. <laughs> As a CPA controller of a company, though, I find it's still a lot like high school. I sit and stare at windows. I send notes to people criticizing them. <laughs> and I say things periodically that people in authority really don't want to hear. <laughs> Though along my career, I thought possibly I had a future in comedy. You know, for many years, often I was told my work's a joke. But as accountants, you really have to appreciate the comedic license that you get here. It's so rare these days that you make up stuff that people laugh at and you stay out of jail. <laughs> you know, more about me. You know, I had a great childhood, wonderful parents. I'm blessed that they're still alive. So I can't blame anything on them. My mother, the sweetest person on earth, you know, I was kind of ugly as a child, not that attractive now, but, you know, she looked for divine guidance, but even the priest wouldn't play with me. <laughs> My father was a early, My father was an innovator in recycling technologies. Yes, all those bottles and cans getting reused, it sounds so much better than alcoholic. <laughs> we do own a family business, uh, Train Master Models in Buford, Georgia. Shameless plug. And, you know, as a family business, you really like your customers. I, I, really love my customers, I love the trains, but as a CPA, I knew the risk associated with owning a small business. But I didn't allow a little thing like knowledge to interfere with my road to personal bankruptcy. <laughs> Sheldon Green of the Big Bang Theory said that the stereotypical model railroader is a child or an impotent old man trying to get away from his wife. <laughs> well, I can tell you that the advent of Viagra and sales have been very, very hard on model trains. <laughs> Secret to my success, though, is I didn't quit my day job. I've been controller of a lot of different industries. Been controller for food and vending. I've been controller for armored car, but I've settled into the garbage. I'm controller for a garbage company, yeah. My, uh, my white collar's always been a little dingy. My mother kind of doesn't, uh, well, she just says her son the CPA. She doesn't <laughs> say I actually work for a garbage company. But working for the garbage company for 18 years, same desk, same position, I've worn out two chairs and twice as many bosses. With, long, with longevity like that, you know a couple things about me. Number one, I'm very proficient at what I do. Number two, I'm the least ambitious person in this room. Number three, you know, number three is, yeah, I know where all the skeletons are buried. Okay? No, I mean literally. <laughs> no, you don't mess with people that have 24-7 access to landfills. <laughs> 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 
The garbage business is a very, very simple business. You choose the items you'd like to take to the curb, and we come by, pick it up, and we make it disappear. Sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. Hold on. Yeah, this mic with Republic. I'm sorry, sir. Could you quit cursing? I'm kind of busy right now. Uh, no. No, sir. Explain it to me, please. We took your leg. You were on your riding lawnmower? And you took off your prosthetic leg, okay. And you think you put it too close to the trash and you think we picked it up, okay. Wow. Um, sir, I need to notify you that there is an additional charge for medical waste. <laughs> Hello? I'm sorry, I should have put that on vibrate. You know, we all work. We all work to support our families. I've got two great daughters. One was my, one is, is my save the world child. She is one of those kids that leaves all those rescued pets in your possession. She's working very, very, she's a, she's a great girl. She's working with children in California, addicted to drugs, seriously. And despite the fact she's just working with a bunch of quitters, I really have a respect for her work. My other daughter is here trying to remain anonymous. Hi, honey. Daddy. Yeah. She, she's more my personality in a skirt. That's a, that's a, I know that's terrible. She's much better looking than I am. It's a very bad visual, isn't it? She is working in the profession. She is an accountant, and I'm very proud of her, even if she is an auditor. I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, but, you know, the bad thing was I did divorce their mother fairly early, and it, it, was, it was hard. You know, we tried to stay very, very positive for the kids. That lasted about 32 minutes. <laughs> Oh, you know, I thought she was Miss Wright when I married her. I just didn't know her first name was always. You know, she, she told me I was one in a million. I just didn't realize how much substantial documentation there was. And, you know, they say I carried an Olymp... They, they say I carried a torch for her for a number of years, but it was more like the Olympic torch. You just pass it off to the next guy. I didn't have to go far, he was just up the street. <laughs> my current wife, my current wife, I have another wife. My current wife, she and I have an open marriage relationship. Yeah, you've heard about those? Yeah. As long as I keep the bank accounts open, we have a marriage and we have a relationship. <laughs> they say behind every successful man, there's a good woman. That's true, she's late for everything. <laughs> you know, we went out to eat lunch the other day, as we often do, and uh, she went to the restroom afterwards and was there quite a while. I eventually went to the door and knocked, and then I eventually went in because I was worried about her, and she was there and standing there waiting for the employee who must wash hands before returning to work. <laughs> you know, I pick on my family like I'm perfect. God, you know, it's hot up here. <laughs> Woo. You don't mind, dude. I got a little relax here. Oh, these? Oh, yeah. Yeah, at my age, I got tattoos. I recently got these. Yeah. Uh, I figure I've got very few years left to regret it. Also, you know, if I wander away from the home, I will have distinguishing marks. <laughs> Did you know that they actually make you a test that you are sober when you take 
when you get your tattoo in writing? Yeah, there's an internal control that's failing. I didn't see anybody there sober. I'm, sh I'm not sure one guy was conscious, okay? But because I don't drink, I passed the written part of the exam with no problem. Wow, you know, stone cold sober. Well, you know, being the inquisitive type, I asked my, my tattoo artist, I said, how's this work? Well, we take the single needle and we use that for the details. We take the three needle cluster and we use that for the lines and some of the other details. And I use the 15 needle shader for the colors. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the machine vibrates and pierces the skin at a rate of 20 strikes per second. Uh-huh. Okay. A lot of people got tattoos, so I figured, how bad could it be? How bad could it be? <laughs> I now know that hell is full. <laughs> and Satan's sadists are now on a work release program through tattoo parlors. <laughs> 6.33 needles average. Y'all keep up here. 6.33 needles average. Somebody check me on this. 6.33 needles average. 20 pierced piercings per second. 60 seconds in a minute. 60 minutes in an hour, six hours each setting, three settings each tattoo, times two tattoos. 16,407,360 needle sticks. Did it hurt? Wow. Nah, it didn't hurt. I'm Mike Devaney, thank you.